Hi, welcome to Chemistry 1001, Thermodynamics. Now I'm going to talk about a very important topic, how delta G relates to reaction spontaneity. In previous lectures we found out that delta G being negative means that the reaction is spontaneous. But what happens as the reaction proceeds? Hmm. Well, a spontaneous reaction starts to go and then it slows down and then it slows down even more until eventually the reaction comes to a stop. That's equilibrium. So what that's basically telling us is that over the course of a reaction, delta G is gradually not becoming spontaneous. The reaction is not becoming spontaneous. In other words, delta G is approaching a minimum value, delta G becoming zero. Here's the picture that I'm trying to allude to. It's a plot of the free energy of the system. Uh, and on the left, we have a reaction coordinate. Say we, on the left, we have 100% reactants, for example, in their standard states. And here we have, on the right-hand side, products, 100% in their standard states. Uh, on the left, we have a starting G value, and the reaction proceeds uh, with a, an initial change of concentration, uh, with delta G being negative. Now remember, as the concentrations of the reactants change, delta G also changes. That's the Nernst equation. Delta G equals delta G naught plus RT ln Q. But we're trying to motivate that equation. So here, delta G is decreasing, 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 until perhaps here at this midpoint, we have roughly a reaction quotient of one, maybe e more or less equal reactants and products. But the reaction keeps going in this case. It, delta G or G uh, keeps decreasing until no more reaction occurs. At this point, delta G can't decrease anymore. This is the equilibrium point. That's obviously what it is. So at this point, uh, we must have the, the reaction quotient uh, Q equals K because that's what happens at equilibrium, if you remember your equilibrium lectures. Likewise, if we start with 100% products in their standard states, those products react backwards towards the equilibrium point until we have some reactants. Again, we reach equilibrium. So that's what's happening with this delta G graph, uh, with this uh, free energy graph here. Now, um, look at the difference between the left-hand side and the right hand side. Here is the G value for reactants in their standard states. One mole per litre, one bar pressure, uh, and everything else uh, standard. Likewise here for products. So this is the difference between this point here on the left and this point here on the right is delta G naught. That is the, dif the difference between uh, uh, reactants, sorry, the difference between the right-hand side and the left-hand side is the difference between products in their standard states and reactants in their standard states. In this case, it's an hexagonic reaction, meaning delta G is less than zero. Delta G is related to the endpoints. It's not related to the drop in delta G coming from uh, the 100% products to the equilibrium point. Uh, this point is coming from the change in the concentrations of the substances away from their standard conditions to the equilibrium conditions. Okay, so here it's standard reactants going to non-standard conditions but equilibrium. Here it's standard products and delta G goes down to non-standard conditions or whatever the final conditions are uh, at equilibrium. And this is obviously a product favoured uh, reaction because Q uh, is bigger than 1, so the reaction equilibrium lies towards the products. But we can consider a reverse reaction, exactly the same, where uh, the reaction proceeds from products but uh, doesn't go very near towards the products, it stays near the reactants. So this is a case where Q uh, equals k, but at this point k is less than 1. 
I'm sorry, I should have said in the previous case, uh, Q is bigger than 1, and here Q is less than 1. Now look, here is delta G for this process. Um, you can see that if the curve, if we draw a curve like this, delta G uh, from products to reactants will be positive. This is an endergonic reaction, delta G greater than zero. So this is not spontaneous. And we can see it's not spontaneous because uh, the reactants, uh, the, the reaction doesn't proceed very much towards the products. So it's interesting. Uh, delta G positive doesn't uh, mean to say that the reaction uh, won't happen. It just says that moving from standard reactants to st standard condition reactants to standard condition products, that will never happen. That's delta G positive. However, moving from standard condition reactants to non-standard condition mixture of reactants and products, that is favourable. That reaction will occur only if it goes to a non-standard equilibrium point. So be careful when you talk about delta G naught not being positive, you're talking about standard conditions going to standard, not standard going to non-standard, which is the normal case. I hope you understood that.